I will say this um, for all of you that are going to ask about 2020. No, I'm not running for 2020. I can promise you what I'll be doing is campaigning for this one. So I look forward to supporting the president in the next election. That was Ambassador Nikki Haley today at the White House after it was revealed she is resigning as U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Haley has been serving in the position for nearly two years, having been nominated after President Trump won the 2016 election. Prior to that, she served as governor of South Carolina for seven years. In her resignation letter, she said she will be heading back to the private sector. She called that move a step up, not a step down. Joining me now from Columbia, South Carolina, is Avery Wilkes. He's a political reporter for the state. Avery, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So first of all, are you surprised by the timing of Nikki Haley's resignation? And what do you make of what she had to say about going back to private life? Absolutely. I think uh, all of us were shocked to come in this morning and, and see that report by Axios and to have to follow that today. I don't <laughs> think any of us were, uh, were planning to do that on our, uh, our daily schedule. Um, and, and it certainly is shocking for it to come ahead of the midterms as opposed to, you know, mo most people would probably leave after the midterms. Um, that being said, she is going to stay on until the end of the year. Uh, but, but certainly, uh, definitely shocked to see that she is leaving. It seemed that, that she had settled in in that job and she had done, um, you know, what was seen as a really good job. A lot of people in South Carolina have been extremely proud of her. Um, her approval numbers have only climbed since she left office, actually. Uh, and, uh, you know, it seemed like she was kind of this, this GOP star, uh, rising star, if she hasn't already, uh, I guess, reached her, her peak. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was certainly shocking to see that she would leave that, that national spotlight, that international spotlight, uh, and, and, you know, and, and choose to return to, uh, to private life. Uh, I'm not sure how, how private it's going to be quite yet. Um, but we do know that, um, you know, her, her family hasn't made a ton of money. Uh, she's been in, uh, she's been in, obviously in, in public office for the last, uh, you know, eight years, not, not including the time she spent as a legislator, uh, where they don't make a lot of, a lot of money in that position. And, uh, and, you know, we've reported today that, that she's more than a million dollars in debt. So it makes sense for her to, uh, at some point, uh, regardless of whether it's now or, or you know, at, uh, at the end of the year or whenever to, you know, to leave this job, um, you know, in hindsight and, uh, get, get a more high paying job and just, and go make a bunch of money before returning to, to public office and, and making another run, which we all expect her to do. Well, as you know, there has been some talk that Ambassador Haley could be appointed to replace Senator Lindsey Graham in the Senate should he join President Trump's cabinet. Now, the president dismissed that, saying he thinks the senator wants to stay right where he is. But what are you hearing, Avery, about a possible shakeup? Yeah, that's been a, a definite theory on the national level. Here, more locally in South Carolina, everyone seems to, to be really, really low on that. Everyone's poo-pooing it. Uh, uh, Lindsey Graham said said uh, yesterday and when he was in a stop in the upstate that he has no desire to be AG. Uh, he, mm. he likes where he's at in the Senate, where he gets to, you know, to work on the Kavanaugh confirmation one week and then a huge foreign issue the next. Uh, I, I think he relishes that role. He has run for president once and, um, and wasn't close to winning that nomination. And, I, you know, I think a lot of people here understand that he is uh, very content with where he's at. Um, Obviously, Jeff Sessions was a former colleague, and uh, I'm not certain that he would want to uh, to come in to replace Jeff Sessions and, uh, you know, have that position of attorney general kind of undermined if Trump were to, to get rid of Sessions. Uh, and, and then, you know, uh, the other part is that no one's really sure that Nikki Haley wants to be a U.S. senator, to be one of 100 voices. Uh, mm -hmm. No one's really sure that she would see that as uh, as an upgrade from being, uh, you know, the person in charge of, you know, the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. That's that's a pretty big spotlight as well. Uh, so people around here are, are, uh, are not extremely confident in that theory, to say the least. Well, in her resignation letter, Ambassador Haley wrote, quote, I expect to continue to speak out from time to time on important public policy matters, but I will surely not be a candidate for any office in 2020. Now, Avery, that does not shut the door to running in the future, say 2024 or 2028. Has Haley indicated interest back home in the possibility and would she have the support there? Well, I actually saw uh, one of her former staffers tweet this uh, a few minutes ago. She really doesn't have a lot of uh, a lot of confidants, a lot of uh, political consultants who uh, you know who have her ear down hmm. here. She kind of kept a you know a, a tighter 
um, I guess, uh, circle. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that this news was such a surprise and didn't get out. But um, I think everyone expects her to, to be in the mix in 2024. Uh, some people were going so far as to think that she might actually challenge Trump um, in 2020. Um, you know, those people probably not from South Carolina, but more nationally. But the idea that she's always kind of been running for uh, for president to a certain degree, that that when she was governor, she didn't take a lot of steps that could come back to haunt her if she was going to run for president or for some larger office, whether it be the Senate or Congress or whatever else. Uh, it seems like everyone has kind of thought that she's always had that that larger aspiration. The same when, when Mark Sanford was in office as governor as well, that, uh, that maybe the governor's office was just a stepping stone. Um, uh, for, for both of them. And, and so there, I think there are a lot of people here who certainly expect her to be in the mix in 2024. I think people would certainly be surprised if she did not uh, did not at least put her, her toe in the water there. Yeah, well, it's interesting because she appears to be departing on good terms. But Nikki Haley, of course, was not always a Trump supporter. In 2016, she endorsed Marco Rubio for president and actually targeted Donald Trump during her GOP response to President Obama's State of the Union address. Let's listen to some of that. During anxious times, it can be tempting to follow the siren call of the angriest voices. We must resist that temptation. No one who is willing to work hard, abide by our laws, and love our traditions should ever feel unwelcome in this country. So several times after that, then candidate Donald Trump attacked her on Twitter, calling her an embarrassment. Avery, do you think if she'd continued to oppose Donald Trump, would that have been the end of her political career? Uh, it's hard to say. She, she really wasn't um, too negatively affected in the times that, that she vexed him in the past. Mm -hmm. um, she always seemed to be able to toe that line between um, standing up to Donald Trump and uh, angering his, his base. It seemed like the larger... GOP was always always approved of her, even when she stood up to Trump on issues like Russia, even when she was the South Carolina governor and, and did endorse Marco Rubio, uh, even when they were ha having their Twitter spats and uh, you know she she shot him up. A bless your heart, which is kind of a kind of a, a backhanded uh, compliment of, of sorts here in South Carolina. And that's one of her favorite lines. Yeah, um, she's always she's always been able. She's very politically adept. She's always been able to toe that line and walk that tightrope extremely well. Um, and and that was one of the things that impressed so many people about her time in the United Nations was how she was able to uh, to stand up to Donald Trump at times when they differed. Um, to, to not always go with with the uh, you know the line coming out of the White House um, to at one point say that no I, I don't get confused this right. this was not my mistake related to uh, the Russia sanctions uh, and she's always kind of found a way to, to toe that line and to remain extremely popular and, and let's talk about that because even as ambassador Nikki Haley was not always as you point out on the same page as other members of the Trump administration in fact it was just in April that she had this to say about Russian sanctions. So you will see that Russian uh, sanctions will be coming down. Uh, Secretary Mnuchin will be announcing those on Monday if he hasn't already. So that comment sparked economic advisor Larry Kudlow to suggest she was perhaps confused over the future of sanctions, to which she responded, as you noted, quote, with all due respect, I don't get confused, um, which was pretty striking uh, when we saw that response and the forcefulness of that response. Avery, help us understand, what do you make of how she at times has been able to navigate working in this tumultuous administration? It's it's kind of the, the darndest thing because so many other people haven't. Uh, mm -hmm. We were just going through earlier in the newsroom the list of people who have who have left uh, cabinet position, you know, high level jobs, uh, but, but she's lasted quite a while. And, uh, you know, in, in, in Trump administration and in Trump's previous businesses, it's been pretty easy to fall out of favor and go by the wayside. But she's been able to stand her ground uh, and, and, and to remain in that position. And like you said, she's leaving on very amicable terms. Uh, they they were together at the press conference. Um, she didn't leave in a way that, that embarrassed Trump in any way. Uh, and, and he was able to say some nice things about her. I, I, I can't remember the last time um, a, a Trump administration official left in this way, uh, right. where, where both of them are sitting and, and speaking to the press together. And, uh, a, you know, Trump at one point said she can come back at any time right. and she'll have any job that uh, uh, that she wants. And I wasn't sure whether he was joking or half joking or completely serious. She chuckled at it. But uh, but, you know, she she has handled things very delicately, um, very intelligently and, and, and in a way that 
uh, and doesn't put anybody in a, in a bad spot and that, that leaves these doors open to her in the future. Well, it certainly will be fascinating to see what she does next. Avery Wilkes, thanks so much for your insight, Avery. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me.